Okay guys, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to essentially create these motion graphics here, inspired by Sonduck Films After Effects tutorials. I just wanted to show you guys and prove the After Effects users that you can in fact do these kind of things in Fusion. And uh, it's not necessarily harder to do than After Effects. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so uh, in DaVinci Resolve, go into the Effects panel in the Effects tab, and then we can drag down a Fusion composition. I like to go to 10 seconds, and then if you select the edge of a clip and press E, extend it all the way. Now, if we go in here, S star and an S ellipse, uh, we can just delete the automatic merge. Now, if we go into the star, we can increase this setting until we are essentially flattening out so it becomes a um, so that it becomes an octagon shape and then we can create an s boolean and we can take this eclipse we have here and we can pipe that in if we view this boolean and we change the operation to xor you can see we have some um, something going on here so we can just lower the size of this then let's also just add in a uh, s render to make this into a uh, final image that can be manipulated like so, uh, and we can actually just copy this and then hit Control shift v to create an instance, and we have two renders here. Then let's add a edge detect node that gives us this nice uh, outline effect. Now let's go ahead and add an image plane to put this in a 2.5D or a 3D space. Let's also add in a duplicate 3D, and we can increase the copies to 15. Uh, and we can also uh, offset it on the x-axis around 0.03 in the minus, something like that. Let's also just add in a um, transform 3D, view it, and then we can rotate it minus 90 on the x-axis, like so. What we want uh, is we want the, uh, the top nut here, essentially, to be uh, um, textured, uh, so not black and white like this. So if you view this merge here, um, let's add a replace material 3D. Actually, let's uh, split the viewers. So view the merge 3D in the right viewer and then view the replace material in the left viewer. Now create a background. Let's just uh, drag these up a bit and then pipe the edge detect into the background like so. Now, if we change this to gradient and then we pipe that into the replace material, view that like so. And we pipe that into the merge and then in the duplicate again, just change this copy to one, like so. So that means the first one is um, is nice. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be adding our colors. So uh, go into the gradient and add two points uh, in the middle, then go to the all the way to the left, choose a uh, nice and uh, orangey warm color, like so. You can go here, you can choose a um, reddish color, maybe a bit more pinkish actually. And then you can go to this one and you can choose a purple. And then on the right one, you can choose a teal color. Then let's just uh, move the uh, points here so that they uh, they fill the, the nut quite nicely. So something like that. There you go. Now let's also just add a uh, merge and then pipe the edge detect on top of it again. And then we can uh, burn in. So um, you only get the edges. Let's go ahead and add a Merge 3D again. And in this one, we're gonna have a Camera 3D. Pipe that in. Oh, also, uh, let's just solo out this viewer. In the camera, go into the Transform, enable Use Target, and then just drag the camera out on the Z axis. Pull it upwards a bit as well. Let's create a Render 3D, view that. So now you can see we have something going on here. Put the camera upwards like that, and then we can take this one Drag it out a bit, like so. Um, I wonder if this is the problem. Okay, so drag the edge detection into the merge as well, and then change the channel to luminance. There you go. Uh, you can also maybe adjust the sliders, see if you get some. If you don't like the uh, little shadow here, you can... But yeah, now we have uh, essentially a very good starting point here. Let's uh, move the camera even more upwards. Yeah, like so. 
Let's also go ahead and uh, add a uh, glow effect to this and then just increase the glow size all the way. And then we can also add a raise node and we can uh, lower the center point so that it's shining upwards. And we can uh, lower the blend to something like 0 0.5 and we can increase the threshold all the way. Oh, and um, in the glow, just uncheck the alpha. Then let's add a background. So create a merge and a background. Just space these nodes out a little bit. Uh, let's pipe the background into the merge, view the merge and then hit control T. Now for the background, we're gonna change the type to gradient. We're gonna change the gradient to radial. And then let's just uh, drag this uh, left point to the center, maybe upwards a little bit as well. Then choose a dark blue, teal, gray blue, tealish, and then go to the right color here. And uh, you can go for a dark, very dark color here. Very saturated too. Let's just uh, make this a bit bluer as well. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna be adding in a grain node. You can see the grain is quite intense. Let's just lower this grain size to 0 0.5 uh, and then before this grain, let's add some film damage. So if you take a look at here, you can see we are getting some uh, some nice little effects. So uh, let's remove the film blur and then the temp shift. We just put that to zero. You can uh, lower the tint shift to 0 0.5 too if you want. Let's uh, uncheck add scratch so that we remove the scratch here. And for the density, we can change that to three. We can also change the dark color to something like um, light gray. Maybe even make it a bit bluer tintish so it's matching the footage a little bit better. Okay, so that's like the uh, the effect. Now you can go and add um, whichever animation you want. So for the reference, we have this uh, thing spinning. So um, let's go ahead and add some animation to this and also add the bouncing ball. Just drag this uh, part of the uh, node tree upwards a little bit. We can also copy the edge detect like so. And then with the edge detect enabled, we can select P emitter. We can change the style to bitmap, pipe that in like so. And then we can type in P directional force, P bounce and P render. Let's just space these out. So if you view this, you can see we have these, um, these dots falling here. Uh, however, we just need one dot. So for the first frame, Go ahead and uh, go into the controller settings of the P emitter, add a keyframe on the uh, number value, change that to one, and then go forward one frame, and we can change that to zero. And you can also increase the lifespan to be the entire duration of the clip. So two, three, nine is uh, the number of frames in our composition here. So now we have one particle and uh, it's falling into the abyss. With this uh, P bounce node here, we can change the region to mesh and uh, we can uh, put this transform into the P bounce. So uh, drag this bounce out a little bit and we can pipe the render P render into the merge, into the second merge. Let's just also move the P emitter up a little bit, up out of frame. Now you can see we have a little circle bouncing. Let's also just uh, move it so that it's uh, centered. And then we can go ahead and increase the size you can type in 0 0.75 we can uh, add the strength to one so then it's bouncing um, faster we're going to take this uh, p emitter and uh, we are going to lower it yeah so we're actually going to put it below our shapes let's make sure it's outside of frame so you can see it's uh, down here now let's just pull it out of frame so for this directional force we are going to put the direction to 90. so now this one is going up and uh, what we can do is we can uh, change the bounce conditions. We can lower the probability to zero. So now the ball is flying up and um, just as it's passing, we can add a keyframe, go forward one frame and then increase the probability to 100 again. So now the bouncing is activated and at the same time, we can um, go into the directional force and we can play around with the uh, settings of the strength and with the um, direction. We have some inertia to deal with, so um, just uh, be aware of that. So now if the momentum is turning there, bam, 
there you go that was a nice first try yeah so uh, what we did was um, we added a keyframe we changed the uh, direction of the uh, p directional force so on frame 10 it is going from upwards to downwards so and then it's bouncing from there it seems to be bouncing more and more so we can set the uh, elasticity to 0 0.9 Let's have it bounce one, two, three, four. And then for the fifth one, we can um, go to the bounce again. We go to the conditions and then we can add a keyframe. And then just before it's going in, we can lower the probability of the bounce. So that's falling through and out of frame. So now we should bounce four times. Let's go to the replace material here and let's just uh, remove that and then we can go to the copies we can increase the number until we get like 14 15 so we only have one disc remaining and as the ball is flowing through we want to adjust this number so that it's kind of generating all of them so something like that maybe so and for the last one let's just pipe the replace material into the merge again in the replace material we can go to the material settings material tab keyframe the opacity and let's just see we are on the right frame yeah so we want uh, to the uh, keyframe it and then adjust it to zero and then we can go forward one frame increase the capacity and um, you can also smooth the keyframes if you want so that would add a, a bit of a curve to the animation now what we can do is we can add a bit of a rotation. Uh, however, in the duplicate 3D node, if you're trying to rotate the duplicates, um, you are essentially rotating out from your object. So um, it's kind of the opposite of what we want to do. We want the, to have the rotation start downwards and move upwards. So the way to do that, first of all, let's just rotate this um, image plane node and then for the uh, same frame this is uh, a pairing you can add a keyframe on the set axis go forward uh, until it bounces and then rotate it 90 degrees that means we have an animation here and then in the spline editor let's just um, select these points right click and then we can duplicate relative and then type 5 so now you can see we have this uh, growing curve, so it's going upwards. You just play this. You can see it is pretty close. So you can just go back to the frames and then just uh, fine tune it. So it's landing there. Let's just hold down Alt and drag. Now that way we're only dragging on the uh, straight line. It's uh, landing again in the middle. And then we can go to the next time it's bouncing. So there, and just we can move all of these. Hold down Alt, drag. Just make it so that it's uh, the uh, rotation is stopping as the ball is bouncing. And you can see we have our full animation covered, so we didn't actually have to choose five. And uh, we can just delete this last keyframe. Just delete that frame as well, actually. So that way it goes up and then it doesn't start rotating until it's bouncing. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Um, now to get the uh, correct rotation animation here, what we need to do is just go to the time offset and then just type in one. And you can see the rotation is beginning in the bottom and moving upwards. And it's continuing to screw it like that. And now if we view this um, media out node, single out this second viewer here, what we could also do is we could add a stop motion node and then change the frame repeat to two. So that means we're essentially freezing half the frames. We could also just um, with the S ellipse, with the pipe that goes into the Boolean, we can also add a S transform, hold down shift and let go. Once you have the uh, green and uh, blue colors on the pipe, we can then right click on the Y size, choose expression. We can pipe that into the X size and then we can adjust them together so so now we can control this opening here independently because uh, if you just adjusted this um, if you adjusted this sphere which is the source for both the particle and the uh, boolean then you would essentially adjust both of them at the same time they wouldn't be independent here you can control them separately 
adjust it to something like that. So it's a bit smaller, a bit neater. You can um, go ahead and uh, essentially add the um, animation of the uh, duplication here retracting as it's falling. So you could go to the keyframes. You could just uh, hold down control, drag both of the keyframes. And then here, just um, make sure to flip them by selecting one and dragging it the other way. So we have it bouncing and it's going down and the color is going off. And here we can also go to the duplication and add a keyframe there. And then we can go forward until the ball is off screen. On the screen, we can see it down there. And then just like drag the slider all the way. So something like that. So yeah, that's how you can uh, create a highly stylized effect in DaVinci Fusion, much like uh, you would do in After Effects. So yeah, that's that. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.